In this problem, we're given a simple pendulum of length 1.2 meters, and we have the mass of the bob on that pendulum, which in SI units will be 0.175 kilograms. And we're told that we raise this thing to an initial angle of 40 degrees, and we release it from rest. And then in part A, we want to get the speed of the bob at the lowest point, and that's an energy conservation question. We just look at the drop in height and convert that to kinetic energy. And then in part B, we want to get the tension in the string when the pendulum moves to its lowest point. And that's a uniform circular motion problem using the speed that we got in part A. So to approach this energy conservation question, we have to figure out what's the vertical distance that the bob fell through as it goes from its initial to final position. And this is a classic trig issue that happens for pendulums. The length that I just labeled is going to be 1.2 times the cosine of 40 degrees. And that points from the attachment point of the pendulum to the initial vertical location. And then when the pendulum gets to its lowest point, the part that I just labeled is 1.2 meters. And really what we're after here is the difference between these two. And I'm going to label the lowest point in the problem as a y-coordinate of 0. And then the initial y-coordinate, I'll go ahead and call that h. And the difference between these two, in other words, the value of h, is going to be 1.2 minus 1.2 cosine 40. So we're set up for the energy conservation problem. And in this case, I simply have gravitational potential energy converting into kinetic energy. So if I say E initial equals E final, well, all the original energy is gravitational potential energy. So I'll write MGH is equal to E final. Well, the Y coordinate is zero in the final position. So there's no gravitational potential left. It's all kinetic. So one half MV squared. And the M's are going to cancel here. And I get a classic result that we've actually seen repeatedly at this point. If I have gravitational potential energy converting into only kinetic energy, then I get that the final speed is root 2GH. And we plug in 9.8 for G. And then 1.2 minus 1.2 cosine 40 is my height. And I can factor the 1.2 out. So 1.2 times the quantity 1 minus cosine 40. And when I run the numbers on this, I get 2.35 meters per second. In part B, we want to get the tension in the string at that lowest point. And so we need to do a force analysis on the pendulum bob at this location. And then we apply what we know about uniform circular motion to answer the question. So there's our pendulum bob. It has a mass of 0.175 kilograms. And I know that this thing is moving to the right at this moment in time at 2.35 meters per second. And that's relevant because the acceleration of this pendulum bob depends on that speed. It's moving on a curved path. And we can compute the acceleration using the formula v squared over r. Speaking of which, the radius of curvature is 1.2 meters. And then I look at my forces here. I have a tension in the string. That's what I'm after. And I have the force of gravity pulling down. And I know that my acceleration points to the center of curvature. So that tension must be bigger than mg. And to get quantitative about it, I just apply Newton's second law, F net equals MA. And the net force is going to be T minus MG. So I've already chosen upward as my positive direction here because I know that's the way the acceleration actually points. And this will give me a positive value of acceleration. And my centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. So I can go ahead and solve symbolically for T. I move the MG to the right-hand side and factor the M out. And I get M times the quantity G plus V squared over R. And it looks like I have all that information now. I have the mass. Of course, I have G. I have the speed, V, and the radius of curvature, which is 1.2 meters, or the length of the string. And we plug everything in. And if you follow the units carefully here, one factor of M cancels in that second term, and I get meters per second squared, which matches the units of acceleration for G. And so my total units come out to kilogram meters per second squared, but that's just a Newton. And after smashing the numbers into a calculator, I get 2.52 newtons for the tension in the string. And we're done. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.